I want to begin by saying up front that I really wanted no part of Queen Greta the Great, but I keep having to read about how much of an inspiration she is. Oh my god, you guys, how inspiring. Wow. Greta the Great is appearing on late night shows, hanging out with cool celebrities and politicians. She's giving TED Talks and speeches at the United Nations. She's receiving awards and cash prizes, and uh, she has no shortage of praise and adoration. The problem for me is that I actually watched Greta the Great's speech at the United Nations and other talks that she has given, and Oh boy, I don't know how any person in their right mind would find what Greta the Great says inspirational. Did everyone watch the same speech that I watched? This is about the masses of morons who allegedly watched these speeches and think this is all wonderful stuff. And I'm not going to respond to every little point in detail, but uh, I do want to show some of the some of the things that really jumped out at me. So let's take a look at uh, at some of the clips from uh, from Greta the Great's speeches. How dare you pretend that this can be sold with just business as usual and some technical solutions? I'm sorry, but how the fuck is this inspiring? I maybe can understand the frustration with the business as usual aspect, but the condemnation of technical solutions? I don't know if you people know how this works, but uh, when you have a problem, reason says that you should use your mind to figure out a solution. Greta the Great asks, how dare we even pretend that technical solutions are even feasible? And when she talks about technical solutions, I assume she means technology like solar power, wind power, electric vehicles, batteries that can store more energy, 3D printing, carbon capture technology, nuclear energy, water desalination, innovations in agriculture. I'm not sure about you guys, but I'm old enough to remember when the people who were concerned about climate change offered and advocated for such technical solutions. Neil deGrasse Tyson was on Joe Rogan recently, popping all kinds of boners talking about technical solutions to climate change. Remember when Bill Nye and Al Gore were talking about how we need to explore solar power and wind power technology? Oh, I remember. I remember. Bill Gates had a whole episode on climate change solutions in his recent Netflix documentary series talking about his investments in carbon capture technology and innovations he's helped make with nuclear energy. And who could forget Captain Cronyism himself, Elon Musk, and his electric cars? Well, Greta the Great says to hell with these guys and their technical solutions. We need to stop pretending that these technical solutions will fix climate change, you science haters. Jeez, grow up already. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic. I want you to feel the fear I feel every day. That's right, folks. Less technical solutions and more panic. In other words, less thinking and more emotion. Apparently, this is what people find inspiring. According to Greta the Great, the only solution to climate change is to reduce global carbon emissions by well over 50% within the next 10 years. The popular idea of cutting our emissions in half in 10 years only gives us a 50% chance of staying below 1.5 degrees and the risk of setting off irreversible chain reactions beyond human control. 50% may be acceptable to you, but those numbers do not include tipping points, most feedback loops, additional warming hidden by toxic air pollution or the aspects of equity and climate justice. Now we can immediately dismiss this proposal as ridiculous. Reducing global carbon emissions by over 50% within the next 10 years without killing billions of people and subjecting the remaining population to abject poverty is simply unfeasible. Perhaps this could be accomplished with some technological miracles, 
But remember, such solutions are out of the question for Greta the Great. Do the people that find Greta the Great inspiring care about the death and misery that her demands will require? Does Greta the Great care about this fact? It doesn't seem like it. It appears what Greta the Great is demanding is the blatant sacrifice of the living for the sake of future generations. They also rely on my generation sucking hundreds of billions of tons of your CO2 out of the air with technologies that barely exist. With today's emissions levels, that remaining CO2 budget will be entirely gone within less than eight and a half years. There will not be any solutions or plans presented in line with these figures here today because these numbers are too uncomfortable and you are still not mature enough to tell it like it is. You are failing us, but the young people are starting to understand your betrayal. The eyes of all future generations are upon you. This, of course, is pure mysticism and collectivism. It should go without saying that future generations are not, in fact, watching us or watching anything because future generations don't even exist yet. I have pointed out numerous times how such logic is akin to anti-abortionists who demand that pregnant women sacrifice their way of life for the sake of the unborn, and here we have Greta the Great explicitly demanding this on a global level. Everyone needs to sacrifice their way of life for people who don't even exist yet for the sake of the unborn, or at the very least so that Greta the Great's generation doesn't have to deal with climate change. And I think this contradicts Greta the Great's point about money and economic growth. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? Am I the only one that's confused by this overall message? Greta the Great talks about money and economic growth as if they're arbitrary, calling them fairy tales. But what the hell does Greta the Great expect to do after the human beings of today and our precious economic growth and money are sacrificed so that Greta the Great and future generations can live. At least live free of the burden of climate change. Doesn't Greta the Great want her generation to enjoy some economic growth? Does anyone want to live in a society where there's no economic growth? Does Greta the Great think that her generation can survive without money or wealth creation? How does Greta the Great expect the climate survivors to live once the catastrophe has been averted? You know, that's a really good question. Can you guys imagine a future where Greta the Great says something like, Good news, everyone. We no longer have to worry about climate change. Let's get the stock exchange back up and running. I'll set up an appointment next week to discuss how we can return to the gold standard and establish private property rights. Does anyone think this is gonna happen? No, 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 of course not! One thing that is certain is that if not enough sacrifices are made today, that Greta the Great and her grandiose climate goons will instead discuss how they're gonna punish all of us for enjoying fossil fuel energy just a little too much. My message is that we'll be watching you. You are failing us! But the young people are starting to understand your betrayal. The eyes of all future generations are upon you. And if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. We will not let you get away with this. Right here, right now, is where we draw the line. The world is waking up, and change is coming whether you like it or not. You hear that, guys? They're watching us, they're not gonna forget, and they won't let us get away with it. Don't you just love it when someone preemptively responds to your refusal to do what they want with vague threats?
Apparently, this is what people find inspiring. Going back to the point about technical solutions and economics, for years, the warmongers have at least pretended to care about technological alternatives and economics. They've tried to think of ways to give up some fossil fuel energy without destroying the economy or the standard of living too much. Even Bernie Sanders and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez talk a big game about all of the jobs, opportunities, and economic growth that their Green Leap Forward policy will create. Bill Gates is funding and exploring nuclear energy and carbon capture technology. Elon Musk is trying to revolutionize the automobile industry. And who could forget the ridiculous solar freaking roadways idea? Solar freaking roadways. And I know a lot of this is probably superficial, but at least there was a certain level of respect for reason and technology and economics and especially respect of the livelihoods of people living today. Greta the Great says to hell with all of that. To hell with your economy and your money. I don't want people trying to figure out technical solutions. I want everyone to panic. I demand that the world reduce its fossil fuel consumption by well over 50%. And if you don't, we're not going to let you get away with this. And I want to stress again that I wanted no part of Greta the Great. It's not like I'm going around the world looking for easy targets to slam dunk on. This is not about Greta the Great. This is about all of the unthinking chimps out there that trip over themselves to applaud Greta the Great because apparently they're so desperate for leadership that they'll take whoever is shoved in their faces. And it looks like they are choosing a leader who champions emotion over reason. Someone who is more than willing to throw the economy under an unmoving bus. Someone who demands the sacrifice of the living for the sake of the unborn. Someone who carelessly issues vague threats if they don't get their way. <laughs> Apparently, this is all inspiring. Nigga, get the fuck out of here. If you want inspiration, I suggest checking out the recent Bill Gates documentary series on Netflix. Anyone that finds what Greta the Great says inspiring is a doofus. <laughs> 